today we are going to talk about sun damage and why you wear sunscreen i already have content on youtube on the sun and the effects of a sun and i've explained in detail why kenyans need sunscreen but it is prudent to help you understand the types of sunscreen and how you should select that sunscreen to suit your skin's needs before i start i have a product here from skin essentials 254 on instagram if you've watched my content on clay masks you will note that i mentioned that clay masks are suitable especially for people who have oily or what we call seborrheic skin in dermatology or acne prone people because they help to absorb that oil that sits on the surface of your skin cells and give you a more matte look so if any of you is struggling with an oily appearance when you wear your products you can do a clay mask at least once or twice or thrice a week to help you control the oil or the shining on your face. So she has an Indian clay cleanser here that she gave as a tester for me. And I'm planning to use it. That's why I talked about it. Today's topic is overview of sunlight and sun damage. Uh, before I begin this, uh, topic I'd like to share with you how we choose sunscreen in summary so I've mentioned before that I'm a Fitzpatrick 5 there are people who are lighter skinned and are Fitzpatrick 4 like I always give an example of my good friend Dr. Gundi who is a wellness she's called the wellness doctor on Instagram she's a psychiatrist she's a Fitzpatrick 4 and then there's a Fitzpatrick 6 Lup Lupita Nyong'o now, when you're choosing sunscreen, if you're a Fitzpatrick 5 like me, ideally, you should choose a sunscreen that protects you when you go to really sunny areas. For example, I'm going to Nigeria. So I've stocked up on physical sunscreen to use on my face, neck, and decolletage because I usually tan when I go to really hot places, like, for example, the coast or Nyanza in Nigeria is even hotter. Notably, countries that sit on the equator are hot and I've explained why they are hot in a previous video about the sun. So, for example, when you go to areas that have um, sun, um, a lot of sun, and you tan, Fitzpatrick 4 and Fitzpatrick 5 will experience that. Ideally, for the face, neck, and decolletage, you're supposed to use a physical sunscreen. And I have shared physical sunscreens and chemical sunscreens at length on my TikToks, my Instagram, my YouTube. So ideally you take an SPF 50 physical sunscreen. You can wear that face neck decolletage. If you can afford to do a physical sunscreen because they're usually more expensive for the face neck and decolletage all over the sun exposed areas of your body when you go to really hot areas, that's fine. And usually these physical sunscreens protect you immediately you step into the sun because we've said within two minutes your sun experiences sun damage so that sun damage is what i wanted to explain today so that you understand why we emphasize so much on the use of sun protection so the other ways that you can protect yourself from the sun is to wear wide brimmed hats to wear long sleeve clothes like i because i know i turn easily i will usually be in a long sleeve cloth covering all the way to my legs also remember to be wearing sunscreen on your feet because it's also exposed to the sun that's why most kenyan women have darker feet than the rest of, of their body because they don't wear sunscreen there so also remember i've said that the sun becomes hotter by the year because we have a depleted ozone layer and i've explained that in my previous content i won't go through it again so i won't go through that um in detail because i've already talked about it in another video i have on youtube about the sun but um like now for me i can wear chemical sunscreen on the rest of my body purely because physical sunscreens are usually expensive i can't quite afford to do a physical sunscreen for the whole of my body and they're also not very easy to find but if you find a physical sunscreen that's affordable and it comes in a huge tub then you can wear it all over your body if you turn so fitzpatrick four and five more or less will wear the same sunscreen only that the advantage i have of a fitzpatrick for fitzpatrick for ideally should wear a physical sunscreen whether they're in nairobi or at the coast or anyanza or wherever a hotter place that's the ideal for them because they don't have the melanin um uh, pigmentation the intensity 
the intensity of pigmentation we have so for me who has intensity of pigmentation let's say in um, compared to fitzpatrick for in nairobi i can wear a chemical sunscreen all through but then i change that sunscreen when i go to hot places like now a fitzpatrick four should ideally do a physical sun sunscreen top to toe of 30 spf 30 in nairobi but spf 50 in coast but me if it's patrick five i can do a chemical sunscreen spf 30 here in nairobi from top to toe then i just change to a physical sunscreen spf 50 when i go to a whole place but a person like lupita nyongo fitzpatrick six she can do chemical sunscreen wherever whether here or at the coast she will turn and um they only do physical sunscreen if they want to they actually don't need it so that's the beauty of being a fitzpatrick six anyway now overview of sunlight and dam and skin damage written by an md medical doctor from harvard medical school i always use scientific resources sunlight stimulates vitamin d production helps control some chronic skin diseases such as psoriasis and causes a sense of well-being however sunlight can cause skin damage it causes a sense of well-being because it triggers triggers the production of some feel-good hormones in your body whenever you're exposed to the sun when you wake up for example that's why people who wake up and want to be in a good mood are usually advised to, to stand next to the to, to stand in an open space and absorb the sunlight for the first 10 to 15 minutes when they wake up just to activate their system and get them going people who've been seen to who people who do that have been seen to generally have a good mood in fact exposure to sunlight is also a treatment for some people with me mental skin illnesses so ultraviolet light ultraviolet light, light although invisible to the human eye now the sun's rays and i've explained that in a previous video has a spectrum so ultraviolet rays is an is one of the spectrum of the rays that it has and it's the one that we speak about the most because it's the one that causes skin damage so although it's visible to the human eye it's the component of sunlight that has the most effect on skin UV light is classified into three types depending on its wavelength. UVA, UVB, UVC. UV light, all types, damages deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, the body's genetic material. So that's what I tell people. Within two minutes, the sun has usually coded your cells to produce abnormal cells. So what the sun does, in summary, it makes your skin thicken to produce a natural SPF to protect it from the sun rays. And it also stimulates the melanin producing cells on your skin to produce more melanin to protect you from the harmful sun rays because now when the ozone layer is depleting the most harsh of the sun rays are actually accessing the earth and that's why our skins generally our skins are showing more uh, um, changes than the skin of people who live before us and that's why for us sun protection is really important so it destroys the DNA and that's why people of fair skin usually develop skin cancer because you know they don't have the intensity of melanin pigment to protect us. And that's why I'm against you getting sunscreen information from somebody who's not a clinical dermatologist because I came across a post of a beauty, some beauty experts, some of them are even medics who've just done aesthetics and they share knowledge on, let's say, Instagram. But the way they share it is so erroneous. You can't tell an African to wear sunscreen to pre protect them from skin cancer as the first thing. Yes, we actually have seen people who get skin cancer because of sun exposure. Because skin cancers are two types. There's a melanoma and melanoma. So depends. So now, um, there's the type that comes because of exposure. And then there's a type that's different. So if you can give a blanket statement like that, because for us as Africans, um, skin cancer is present, yes, but it doesn't top the reasons for why you tell somebody to use sunscreen. You can't scare someone into using sunscreen. You can't tell them, yes, um, use sunscreen because you're reducing your chances of getting skin cancer. No, it doesn't make much sense because we also have deeper melanin pigment than the rest of the races so we're not high on the list as far as skin cancers because of exposure to the sun are, co co are, co are co um, concerned but why we actually wear um sun protection of any kind and sun protection is not just sunscreen and that's what beauty experts in kenya also do wrong 
when you're advising somebody about some protection, it's a whole lifestyle change. It's how long they expose themselves when they're in the sun. It's what they wear. It's a whole lifestyle change. It's not just sunscreen. Not everybody can afford sunscreen. So you can't really put that blanket statement out there. Now, there are actually certain diseases in dermatology that are flared up by the sun. We have a number. Some are even bad enough to be fatal. We have people who are born without melanin pigmentation and they are Africans and we have to protect them completely from the sun. For example, persons with albinism, other persons uh, that are born with xeroderma pigmentosum. So generally from a clinical perspective, we are aware that the sun disrupts the health of the skin in many other ways, not just skin cancer, even acne itself. It's an inflammatory condition that is also set off by sun exposure because it produces antioxidants and uh, it produces ox um, reactive species which are also responsible for the acne fair. So for us from a dermatological perspective, we don't tell you to wear sunscreen purely because of skin cancer, especially if you're a Fitzpatrick 5 and 6. We usually tell you to do that just purely for the health of the skin because all skin conditions have been noted to actually have um, a... Uh, all if not most have a relationship to sun exposure like the sun can trigger certain skin conditions and if any of you follows me though i put that page private sometimes i have a page called dr nurita dermatology on instagram because i just became aware of the fact that people are not really clear what clinical dermatologists do they usually think that we're really superficial we inject botox no we're really deeply involved in diseases so i have a page where i just post the diseases we see and most of those diseases actually have an origin with unhealthy sun expo exposure so basically for us telling you to protect yourself from the sun is because of that but you'll find beauty experts in kenya borrowing what clinical dermatologists in caucasian countries teach about skin cancer and imposing that on you that's not the reason why I'm not telling you to wear sun protection because of skin cancer. It is a possibility, especially in countries like ours at the equator. For any Fitzpatrick type, I, I'm not denying that. But there are many other reasons why we tell you that. We also tell you that because of something we call solar elastosis, which is purely the destruction of collagen, which we see under the microscope when we look at your skin. So regardless of your skin, Fitzpatrick skin type, we will see a destruction of collagen and that is what shows as premature wrinkling premature aging and just general unhealthy skin that's dull because what the sun also does it it makes the skin thicken to produce a natural spf so people who have not protected themselves against the sun usually look older like there was always this joke about people who are born in Luoland because Luoland has really harsh sun and we usually say that they used to look the oldest in high school. If you've met somebody who was born in Luoland, raised in Luoland, used to rear livestock there, go do chores outside. In high school, they used to look older, especially the guys. So it's it's a joke, yes, but it's just an example of what the sun can do. Because we don't, unlike people at the coast, our, our sun is hotter in Luoland plus. We don't necessarily protect ourselves the way people in the coast can protect themselves. It's to cover themselves around with clothes because of Muslim, being Muslim and all that. So basically, there are very many reasons why we tell Africans or Kenyans to wear sun protection or sunscreen. And skin cancer is actually, it's important, but it's last on the list. So I'm just giving you an explanation because I feel like people who are out here telling you to wear sunscreen are not really explaining why. And that's why I'm doing this video. So UV light all types damages the DNA, uh, which can lead to, to skin cancer. Now, this is, of course, a paper written in perspective of the, the Caucasians and Asians, but I'll break it down for us. UV light also causes damaging effects such as premature skin aging and wrinkling, which is actually unsightly. Like, there are guys who you see have very deep furrows on their forehead. It's unsightly, especially if you're not older than 60. So, sunburn can also result from UV light, pri primarily UVB. There is no safe level of UV light. The amount of UV light reaching the Earth's surface is increasing, especially in the northern latitudes um latitudes geography those countries that lie up north um yeah 
This increase in ASA equator. This increase is caused by depletion of the protective ozone layer high in the atmosphere. Ozone are naturally occurring chemical blocks much UV light from reaching the surface of the earth. Chemical reactions between ozone and chlorofluorocarbons, chemicals in refrigerants and spray can propellants are depleting the amount of ozone in the protective layer. So I think if you buy um, any spray, they usually will suggest, uh, they will usually indicate if they are ozone protective, it's um, something they do now. The amount of UV light reaching the Earth's surface also varies depending on other factors. UV light is more intense between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. So we usually say between those hours, try to avoid being outside in the sunlight as much as you can or wear sun protective clothing as I've explained. Um, there's also something we call UPF clothing, which is especially good for fair skinned individuals, let's say children when they go to the beach instead of buying for them normal swimwear you buy for them upf swimwear and um if you follow my instagram my current active instagram i'm going to show what that looks like so during um 10 a.m to 4 p.m during the summer of course in kenya it's summer all through and at high altitudes and low latitudes such as at the equator like us we are low latitudes but we're at the equator glass heavy cloud smoke and smog filter out much UV light. But UV rays may pass through light clouds, fog, and about one foot of clear water, potentially causing severe burns. So even when you're swimming, UV light can penetrate to the water. Natural protection. The skin undergoes certain changes when exposed to UV light to protect against damage. The epidermis, the skin's uppermost layer thickens, blocking uv light so people who don't protect from the same themselves from the sun usually have much thicker skin see that's already a reason why an african should wear sun protection and sun protection is not just sunscreen um the melanocytes pigment producing skin cells make increased amounts of melanin a brownish colored pigment that darkens the skin resulting in a tan tanning provides some natural protect protection against future exposure to uv radiation because melanin absorbs the energy of the UV light and helps to prevent the light from damaging skin cells and penetrating deeper into the issues. So before, white uh, Caucasians and Asians used to think that tanning was healthy, but it usually just meant that your skin is, is overworking in trying to protect the DNA of the cells beneath it. So it's producing melanin and it can even thicken. So that's why tanning in the sun is not recommended for fair-skinned individuals. Otherwise, tanning has no health benefits. Tanning for the sake of being tanned is hazardous to health. Sensitivity to sunlight varies according to the amount of melanin in the skin. So tanning also happens in us. Like as I said, if I go to the coast, I look like a Fitzpatrick 6. So when I notice that has happened, I usually know that my skin is trying to save the DNA of inner skin layers. And it means that the sunscreen I'm using is not adequate and I should have used something different. So sensitivity to sunlight varies according to the amount of melanin in the skin. Darker skinned people have more melanin and therefore greater built in protection against the sun's harmful rays. However, darker skinned people are still vulnerable to sun damage and the long term effects of exposure to UV light. The, more, the amount of melanin present in a person's skin depends on heredity as well as on the amount of recent sun exposure. Some people are able to produce large amounts of melanin in response to UV light like me, whereas others produce very little. People with blonde or red hair especially are especially susceptible to the short-term and long-term effects of UV radiation because they don't have intense melanin. Because they are not able to produce enough melanin, the melanin in their skin can also become distributed unevenly, resulting in freckling. People with vitiligo have patchy areas of skin that have no pigment. People with albinism have little or no melanin at all. So there's also people with vitiligo for whom we are very keen about some protection. I remember there's a lady who um, had vitiligo and she told me she went to 
um, Kiambu County Referral Hospital. And imagine the person who saw her. I don't know what kind of clinical dermatologist that was. A non physician clinician, most likely, did not give her sunscreen. How do you see a person with vitiligo and you don't give them sunscreen and you're in the dermatology practice? The things I don't understand. In fact, those people should be on SPF 50 physical sunscreen. That was really disappointing. I don't know who she went to, but anyway, that's why I really sensitize you guys on these things because some things can be life threatening. Because then, if you don't protect that those patches then you can end up getting a, a terminal condition like skin cancer uh that's that's um severe so photo aging um remember to check fitz fitzpatrick skin type classification let me just go through it before i go into photo aging so there's one to six and i read it again one is pale white skin red or blonde hair blue or green eyes freckles always burns never turns and fitzpatrick basically tells us the turning ability it's not fitzpatrick doesn't only enable us to choose your sun protection which is the most important foundation of skincare because you're trying to look young when you use sun when you use skincare products in the first place your first enemy in looking youthful is the sun so um Fitzpatrick is also used when we are doing procedures in dermatology. So that's why we're particular about it because there are certain people you don't want to use starting procedures on because they hyperpigment easily with those kind of procedures. So you can leave them with a permanent darkening. So Fitzpatrick is a really important classification for us in clinical dermatology and that's why I speak about it a lot. So that even when you go for procedures, like I remember there's a lady who's gone for a procedure in the dermatologist's office actually, and she ended up getting hyperpigmentation that has taken so long to get over. So um, one of the things that knowing Fitzpatrick helps you with, you understand whether that procedure you're hoping to do for something that's a problem on your skin is suitable for your Fitzpatrick and how it usually will end up looking so that even if it's something that you are not you were not expecting then you you still knew that it was part of the process of healing because you were already explained to that in your fitzpatrick tank this is what is supposed to happen with that procedure and all that information is available on the internet so fitzpatrick 2 is fair skin red or blonde hair blue hazel or green eyes they burn easily and turn with difficulty darker white any eye or hair color fitzpatrick three sometimes mild burn gradually turns light brown skin is fitzpatrick for most asians will, will fall here it burns only slightly turns easily um brown skin with which is fitzpatrick five rarely burns easily turns darkly so for me there are certain procedures i won't do and also i'll be i will be careful about the sun because tanning is my way of protecting myself against the sun it's actually an advantage for us but guys who don't tan are at a disadvantage it means they're not protecting pr 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 producing enough melanin so uh fitzpatrick six dark brown or black skin never burns always turns dark very easily so people who have fitzpatrick six may not really notice this but they actually still get darker when they go to places that have um a lot of sunlight so photo aging why we actually tell africans to apply some protection is because of photo aging also because you don't want to look older than you age and most of you i said are really doing skincare the wrong way you can never approach skincare without addressing sun damage so i remember telling people who have been following me in my tutorials and you can join us by emailing dr skin at gmail.com if you want to start a skincare regimen first assess your sun protection because everything that you're using for skincare because you want baby soft skin you want to look for a baby everything that you're using will not work if you're still not adequately protecting yourself from the sun and that's why i tell women if you are doing skincare the right way the most expensive thing in your regimen should be sun protection
whether it's the wide brimmed hats the long sleeved clothes the the sunscreen if you're buying products sunscreen should be your most expensive when you're starting skincare because the other thing you need to do other than sunscreen is to use retinoids because you want to reverse the sun damage because 90 percent of the sun damage or 80 percent of the sun damage we experience happens before the age of 18. so everything that happens to our face after the age of 18 is just because of that sun damage it's only the 10 percent we experience after that that maybe can injure us a bit more but what we see in our skin that we're not happy about like early wrinkling and all it is because of what we experience before the age of 18 and that's why you start on a retinoid to reverse that sun damage so you can never really start skincare on a foundation other than sunscreen and retinoids and that's why i teach people about the use of retinoid and sunscreen first or tretinoin or sunscreen and retinol or sunscreen and adapalene that's how you start proper proper skincare but most of you you go to beauty shops they give you vitamin c you go to beauty shops they give you glycolic acid you go to beauty shops they give you aha bha for what reason you need to first repair that skin barrier with emollient sunscreen retinoids before you start any actives so that's what we do when we are doing skincare in our groups so photo aging exposure to sunlight prematurely ages the skin damage to the skin caused by prolonged exposure to sunlight is known as photo aging exposure to uv light causes fine and coarse wrinkles irregular pigmentation so it's more than wrinkling even pigmentation large freck like spots called lentiginous seen especially in like caucasian people if you see white people who've stayed in kenya a lot they have sun spots we call that lentiginous a yellowish complexion and a leathery rough skin texture so we tell you to actually apply sunscreen not necessarily because of skin cancer but because of those things i've named Sorry. Although fair skinned people are most vulnerable, anyone's skin will change with enough exposure. Okay? Anyone's skin can change. So there's a photo of photo aging here. It's just early wrinkling um, that you will see most people with. So I just want to show you what people with sun damage looks like. And this can affect anybody's skin. You see? There's wrinkling there. Excuse me. So, photo aged skin is characterized by fun, fine and coarse wrinkling, irregular pigmentation, lentiginous, large freck like spots, roughness, and a yellowish color. So, there is something called actinic keratosis, which we actually see in persons in al with albinism or people who are really fair skinned. Acti actinic keratosis are precancerous growths caused by long-term sun exposure. These growths are usually pink, red, or less commonly gray or brown. They feel rough and scaly, and they're usually skin seen in Fitzpatrick 3, 2, and 1. So seborrheic ker keratosis is, is something we see in Dama. Looks similar to actinic keratosis. They may appear on areas of the skin that are not exposed to sunlight but are not precancerous. Um... I wish I had a photo of seborrheic keratosis, but anybody who's actually had seborrheic keratosis knows how it looks like. Skin cancers. The more sun exposure people have, the higher their risk of precancerous growths in skin cancers, including squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, and malignant melanoma. Those are the types of skin cancers we deal with, and we usually also see this in, in Kenyans and Africans. As, like let's say if you're a farmer or you come from a really hot part of the country you can still get this um especially if you're fair skinned skin cancer is especially common among people who are extensively exposed to sunlight as children and adolescents and among those who are continuously exposed to the sun as part of their profession or recreational activities such as athletes athletes farmers ranchers sailors and frequent sunbathers in addition, UV exposure in tanning salons increases the risk of skin cancer and skin damage. That's common in Caucasians. Treatment, sunburn prevention. So, of note, I am going to discuss aloe vera, which some fair-skinned individuals like Fitzpatrick for Asians use when they go to the sun. And for example, we had a clinical case today of a lady of Fitzpatrick three who went to the coast and she bought aloe vera off the supermarket 
and the aloe vera ended up reacting with her so badly on exposure to the sun that she burned okay so i am doing a class on the use of aloe vera also to caution you guys on buying products just off the counter to use on your skin i'm very cautious on what i use i remember i even used an aloe vera that said 100 percent and it was not and i ended up getting a severe reaction on my skin and i bought it from a pharmacy a very good pharmacy at yaya so it can be that bad so please um try to attend my aloe vera tutorials if you're keen on using aloe vera and especially if you're a fair skinned individual because most of you use aloe vera not to uh to 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 suit sunburn aloe vera will not give you an spf or protect you from the sun but it will suit sunburn but some of you are buying the wrong aloe vera if you're not using aloe vera from the plant be very cautious so anyway prevent sunburn so even we get sunburn and that is already evidence enough that we can get skin cancer so when you want to prevent sunburn what you do is you first of all make sure that you only expose yourself to the sun for less than two hours without sun protection if you're doing more than two hours in the sun in a sun that burns you need to be reapplying sunscreen and if you have a history of sunburn before use physical sunscreen in the places that are exposed or just make sure you have a chemical sunscreen of spf 50 okay you can have a physical sunscreen spf 30 50 but best to buy a physical sunscreen spf 50 when you're going to places where you experience sunburn also you can apply aloe vera after the sunburn but the aloe vera you apply has to be really legit and we are going to discuss where you can get legit aloe vera when you attend our tutorials also you can use emollients emollients are also good when you've had sunburn they help to repair that skin hydrate it before you use retinoids on that area when they are healed so for photo aging treatments are applied to the skin like i've just recently been teaching women how to do a glycolic acid 70 percent peel at our skincare parties at double d's we'll have that every month I recommend that you sign up for those classes so that you learn how to use chemical pills, pills because they are treatments for sunburn so, or for sun damage. To minimize the damaging effects of the sun, it is particularly important to avoid further sun exposure and tanning beds, wear protective clothing, and apply sunscreens. Damage that is already done is difficult to reverse. So sunburn prevention. Sunburn results from a brief days actually something here on sunburn prevention and i'm probably going to just create um maybe i'll just need to go through that actually i'll need to go through that sunburn let me just go through it quickly though it's not short it's not short but i think you guys need to hear this so this may be a long video so now um sunburn sunburn results from a brief or acute overexposure to ultraviolet light overexposure to ultraviolet light causes causes sunburn sunburn causes painful reddened skin and sometimes blisters fever and chills people can prevent sunburn by avoiding excessive sun exposure and by using sunscreens cold water compresses moisturizers and NSAIDs drugs is pain until the sunburn heals okay um the amount of sun exposure required to produce a burn varies with the amount of melanin on the skin usually visible as the amount of pigmentation the ability to produce more melanin and the amount of uv light in the sunlight on the day of the exposure it's not exposure over exposure sunburn results in painful reddened skin Severe sunburn may cause swelling and blisters. Yeah, like the lady who applied the aloe vera, she had blisters. Symptoms may begin as soon as one hour after exposure and typically reach their peak within three days, usually between 12 hours and 24 hours. Some severely sunburned people develop a fever, chills, and weakness. On rare occasions, even may go into shock, characterized by very low blood pressure, fainting, and profound weakness mild sunburn so uh, mild sunburn is reddened skin where you've been exposed to the sun 
Several days after a sunburn, people with naturally fair skin may have peeling in the band area, usually accompanied by itching. These peeled areas are even more sensitive to sunburn for several weeks. Sunburned skin, particularly peeled sunburned skin, can become infected. Permanent brown spots called lentiginous may develop. People who have had severe sunburns when young are at a greater risk of skin back cancer, particularly melanoma in later years, even if they have not been exposed to too much sun since that time. So this is a warning to people with fair skin. Any spot that has experienced sunburn can actually be a site because the DNA has been permanently changed for skin cancer. And that's why you actually use retinoids to remove those sun damaged cells. So there is a photo here of severe sunburn, it's a blister. Prevention of sunburn, avoid of exposure to sun, wear protective clothing, use sunscreens. Avoidance, the best and most obvious way to prevent sun damage is to stay out of strong direct sunlight. Exposure to bright midday sun should be avoided even for people with dark skin. UV rays are not as strong before 10 a.m. and after 4 p.m. If sun exposure is unavoidable, the person should seek shade as soon as possible. Cover up in UV protective clothing, we call that UPF. And wear sunscreen, a broad brimmed hat and UV protective sunglasses. I was telling some ladies that I was teaching that ideally you should walk into a store that does glasses or sunglasses and ask them for uv 400 sunglasses and they're really affordable to protect your eyes and the under eye area from the sun there's a video loading where i did skincare consultations for the women that i had for the previous class we had and you can email dr nurita skin at gmail.com to join our classes and i was telling them that part of sun protection is also choosing the right sunglasses especially if you have darkness around the eyes Many materials are capable of blocking UV radiation, but many are not. Clothing, ordinarily window glass, smoke and smog, filter out many of the damaging rays. However, water is not a good filter. UV and UVB light can penetrate a foot, about 30 centimeters of clear water. Clouds and fog are also not good filters of UV light. A person can get sunburned even on a cloudy day, and that's why you still wear sun sunscreen even on cloudy days. So did you know people can get sunburned even on cloudy days because light clouds do not filter UV light? Even sunscreens that are water resistant need to be reapplied after swimming or sweating. Snow, water and sand reflect sunlight, magnifying the amount of UV light that reaches the skin. People also burn more quickly at high altitudes. That's why even when it's snowing, you wear sunscreen because of that reflection. If you go to water places to, to swim, you wear sunscreen because of that reflection. People also burn more quickly at high altitudes. Where the thin air allows more burning UV light to reach the skin. And low latitudes such as at the equator. We have a thin air between us and the sun. Although sun exposure helps generate vitamin D, many experts recommend maintaining adequate vitamin D levels by consuming supplements if needed rather than by intentional of exposure to sunlight. 5 to 15 minutes of sun exposure on the arms a few days a week is enough to maintain vitamin D levels. Okay, 5 to 15 minutes of sun exposure on the arms a few days a week will give you adequate vitamin D. It's a good point to note. Clothing. The sun's damaging effects can be further minimized by wearing protective coverings such as hats, shirts, pants, and sunglasses. Now, that time is there for fair skinned individuals, but darker skinned individuals like Fitzpatrick Six probably need about 30 minutes to about an hour, depending on the intensity of the melanin. So, of, of sun exposure to, 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 to give them enough vitamin D without sunscreen. Clothing, the sun's damaging effects can be further minimized by wearing protective coverings such as hats, shirts, pants, and sunglasses. Fabrics with a tight weave block the sun rather than fabrics with a loose weave. Special clothing that provides high sun protection is commercially available. This type of clothing is labeled with ultraviolet protection factor UPF followed by a number that indicates the level of protection similar to sunscreen labeling. Broad brim hats help protect the face, ears, 
ears and neck but people still need to apply sunscreen to these areas people should regularly wear uv protective wrap around sunglasses to help shield the eyes and the eyelids the people who actually get skin cancer on the eyelids because of sun exposure like persons with albinism and vitiligo and all that sunscreens before exposure to strong direct sunlight a person should apply a sunscreen which is a cream or lotion containing chemicals that protect the skin by filtering out uv light older sunscreens tended to filter only uvb light but most newer sunscreens effectively filter uva light as well so you check your sunscreen to see that they say that they filter uva and uvb it's broad spectrum spectrum Sunscreens are available in a wide variety of formulations, including creams, lotions, gels, foams, sprays, powders, and sticks. Self-tanning products do not provide significant protection from UV exposure. Chemical sunscreens. So, self-tanning tanning products are usually used by people with fair skin and some people who, let's say, have vitiligo but want to camouflage their skin. Chemical sunscreens contain several substances that absorb UV radiation. Ingredients that absorb UV radiation, UVB radiation include cinnamates, salicylates, and paraaminobenzoic acid power derivatives. Benzophenones block UVA and UVB light. Avobenzone and examol filter in the UVA range and may be added to provide further UV protection. These are just ingredients used in chemical sunscreen. Barrier or mineral sunscreens contain the substances zinc oxide or titanium dioxide which reflect both UVB and UVA rays, thus blocking them from reaching the skin. These ones, thick white ointments, have been reformulated to create a more transparent layer while still blocking almost all sunlight from the skin. Yeah, what's having a talk about SP50? SPF 50 will only allow about 2% of the sun to penetrate your skin, which is okay. So that's why we say beyond SPF 50, you actually are probably overdoing your sun protection because you, you wouldn't mind that 2% still seeping into your skin. But there are people for whom we don't mind them going higher on SPF because they, they just have no melanin pigment and they can't do without sun protection. These newer sunscreens have a more pleasing thickness and color which allow them to be combined with other traditional chemical blockers, thereby providing even more sun protection to a given formulation. Some cosmetics also contain zinc oxide or titanium oxide, meaning they are sun protected. All chemical sunscreen ingredients are thought to be absorbed by the body to some degree. Although most ingredients cause minimal side effects, some do have potential risks and others are currently being studied. Traditional barrier sunscreens have relatively large mineral particles that are not absorbed by the body and are currently considered safe. That's why people like me with reactive skin barriers because of eczema favor physical sunscreens because they are not absorbed so they would react. Newer formulations of mineral sunscreens are made with extremely small particles, nanoparticles that may be absorbed by the body. Although these nanoparticles are thought to be safe, they are still being studied. People concerned about the effects of absorbed nanoparticles may prefer to use so-called non-nano mineral sunscreens. That's just too much to, to consider. In the United States, the Food and Drug Administration FDA rates sunscreens by their sun protection factor number. The higher the SPF number, the greater the protection. That's why they're more expensive. Sunscreens rated between 2 and 14 provide minimal protection. Those rated between 15 and 29 provide good protection. And those rated 30 and above provide maximum protection. That's why in dermatology, we only tell you 30 is the minimum. Products that protect against sunburn, photoaging, and also reduce the risk of skin cancer are labeled broad spectrum and have an SPF of 15 and higher. The SPF, however, only quantifies the protection against UVB light exposure. There is no skill for UVA light protection. When you buy a sunscreen, make sure it says that it covers UVA and UVB lights. Okay. For the best protection, people should use a broad spectrum water resistant sunscreen, sunscreen with an SPF rating of SPF 30 or higher. One ounce should be used to cover the entire body surface of an average sized person. One ounce is the tot glass. That tot glass should cover the whole of the body. Two finger rule face neck decolletage. 
sunscreens can fail if not enough of the product is applied if the product is applied too late sunscreen should optimally be applied 30 minutes before exposure to the sun and if the product is not reapplied after swimming or sweating even sunscreens labeled as water resistant or every two hours during sun exposure most people apply less than a half of the recommended amount of sunscreen yeah imagine i had a farm tech telling she was telling me didn't know i mean dama that the trick with sunscreen so that it doesn't leave a white cast is to apply it sparingly i looked at him sir sir are you all right no the white cast does not matter apply enough sunscreen friends you can deal with the cast later sometimes sunscreens cause allergic reaction people may react to the sunscreen after applying it or after applying it and then going into the sun, known as a photoallergic reaction. So like this lady probably had a photoallergic reaction to the aloe vera she applied. Some dermatologists can do tests to diagnose such photosensitivity reactions if the reason for the reaction is unclear. So did you know an ounce, ounce of sunscreen enough to fill a standard shot glass is usually needed to cover the entire body, exposed areas of the body. Most people apply less than half that. Supplements. Um, these are supplements that I'll also share with you that we can use, especially if you're fair skinned or you live in really sunny areas. There's something we call Polypodium leucotomus. It's a natural tropical fun extract and nicotinamide, a form of vitamin B3, are supplements that are taken by mouth that provide some protection against the damaging effects of sunlight. We use that especially in people who have a clinical uh, clinical problem um, that does not allow them to experience sun exposure like the rest of us like persons with albinism. It's easier for you to relate with, but we also have so many diseases in dermatology that um, don't do well with the sun. There's one called porphyria and some people die when those reactions happen on their body. So this is actually serious. However, they are not a replacement for other methods of sun protection. So treatment of sunburn. Um, cold compressors and other soothing cooling skin applications, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and seeds like brufen, sometimes antibiotic burn creams. Cold water compressors can soothe raw hot areas as can aloe vera and over-the-counter skin moisturizers without anesthetics or perfumes which might irritate or sensitize the skin. Bland emollients, that's what we mean. And if you follow my content, you know what I mean by bland emollients. NSAIDs taken by mouth help relieve pain and inflammation. Petrolatum based products such as petroleum jelly should be avoided in severe sunburns. Corticosteroids applied to the skin seem to be no more effective than cool compresses. So when you experience a sunburn, get a cool compress like some ice and then apply bland emollients. Ointments or lotions containing anesthetics such as benzocaine and diphenhydramine temporarily relieve pain but should be avoided because they occasionally trigger an allergic reaction. Specific antibiotic burn creams are required only for severe blistering. Most sunburn blisters break on their own and do not need to be popped and drained. Sunburned skin rarely becomes infected, but if an infection develops, healing may be delayed. A doctor can determine the severity of an infection and prescribe antibiotics if necessary. Sunburned skin begins healing by itself within several days, but complete healing may take weeks. After burned skin peels, the newly exposed layers are thin and initially very sensitive to sunlight and must be protected for several weeks. So are tans healthy? In a word, no. Although a suntan is often considered an emblem of good health and of an active athletic life, Tanning for its own sake has no health benefit and is actually a health hazard. Any exposure to ultraviolet A or B, UVA or UVB light can alter or damage the skin. Long-term exposure to natural sunlight causes skin damage and increases the risk of skin cancer. Exposure to the artificial sunlight used in tanning salons is harmful as well. The UVA lights used in these establishments cause the same long-term effects as exposure to UVB light, such as wrinkling and motile pigmentation, photoaging, in brackets, and skin cancer. Quite simply, there is no safe tan. So even for us, when you notice you are tanning, that's not a healthy, healthy place to be. That place you are tanning at can, can produce skin cancer if you're exposed again a lot to the sun without protection. 
self-tanning or sunless lotions do not really tan the skin but rather stain it they therefore provide a safe way to achieve a tanned look without risking dangerous exposure to uv rays however because they do not increase the melanin production self-tanning lotions do not offer protection from the sun therefore sunscreen should still be used during exposure to sunlight depending on a person's skin type the fitzpatrick the formulation used and the manner in which the lotion is applied so that was really good as far as how to treat sunburns oh wait there was actually a professional site so this was a site for you guys it's not a professional site let me see if the profession professional version of this is more intense um Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Because I've been reading the patient version. version. <sighs> um, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there is um, the version for doctors. I don't want to read that for you because that's a bit complicated. I'm usually here giving you patient information, so it's fine. So let me continue with the version we had before we came to sundown for overview of sun damage yeah so where we were at actually coming to the end of this is we talked about sunburn pre pre prevention for photo aging treatments are applied to the skin to minimize the damaging effects of the sun um sunburn treatment moisturizing creams Temporarily plump up wrinkles and makeup helps hide imperfections in skin color such as freckles, sunspots, and lentiginous and some fine wrinkles. So they're saying that if you have wrinkles, you can use moisturizer to sort of give an effect of less appear, uh, less visible wrinkles because they pump up the wrinkles because of hydration. They pull water to your skin. Deep wrinkles and substantial skin damage, however, require significant treatment to be re re reversed. So if you have deep wrinkles and you're, you're not happy with how your skin feels, how it looks, and you're over the age of 25 or you're the age of 25, you should have a, a medical grade skincare regimen. And those are the things I do in my tutorials, so you should sign up for them. Photo aging, various treatments such as chemical peels, alpha hydroxy acids, tretinoin creams, like I'm using tretinoin cream, tretinoin cream and glyconic acid peel, 70%. Um, and laser skin resurfacing may improve the cosmetic appearance of chronically sun damaged skin. Although these treatments can improve the look of superficial skin changes, for example, fine wrinkles, irregular pigmentation, yellowish or brownish discoloration and roughness, they have much less of an effect on deeper wrinkles and substantial skin damage. Yeah. Deeper wrinkles, you can try and hit them with a really deep chemical peel like TCA and we'll come to that during our tutorials. But yeah, still not effective. And that's why the most effective thing is to protect yourself from the sun, prevent sunburn and just wear your sunscreen and sun protects the whole thing so i'm going to leave this here there's a professional version that professional version version i will look at it when i have my own free time because i don't want this video to be long mm. yeah there's pathophysiology those are things i can read for myself as a medical doctor Oh, I don't need to bore you.